yes, yes, and more yeses. Wait until you get a hold of this one. This is a good one from Aurora, Colorado. Here we are, the Modern Eater Show. We begin, and I can't wait to do this one, Seoul Korean Barbecue and Hot Pot. And we have the owner right here, JW, with us. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? And Sally, how are you, too? I'm good, how are you? Good to see you guys. We're going to do a little tour, but today's about community and how people work together. Okay. We have the Asian Chamber here with us, and we also have the Aurora Chamber with us in the restaurant today, along with Emily Griffith, Culinary Quick Start. You're going to see how all of these businesses work together to really, really uplift the community and come together with food and beverage, because that's what we love, right? Awesome, yes. You're an entrepreneur at heart. Yes, I am. Tell us, uh, first of all, your name and what you do here. My name is J.W. Lee. It's a short of the, my name is Jongwook Lee. So I am born in Korea and I raised in Korea. I immigrated to the United States about 20 years ago. So I started, I mean, when I was in Korea, I was a culinary chef. And then after I moved to the United States, I was still doing chef work. And then I started opening my own business. I started opening my own business and started in 1997. And I came to, uh, this far. Currently, I have about 10 restaurants in Colorado. And everything is up and running and operating everything. He's a world traveler. He's a bon vivant. He loves food and beverage. But that entrepreneurial spirit, we're really going to dig in today. Sally, how about you? What do you do? Me, I'm um, the company representative here. And I'm also managed here as well. And today, we're just going to walk around. And I'll show you and explain everything. Do you mind? Yeah, of course. Where do we start out? We'll go ahead and go to our hot pot side of the restaurant here. Please. All right, so hot pot. What's a hot pot, Yeah, guys? so when you walk in, we do sell our fresh kimchi and our side dishes that we sell on the barbecue side. And you could purchase them in the front here on the hostess stand. So this one we made every day. So every day, made right for you. You come in here and you pick out what you want. Is that what I'm seeing? Right, exactly. Okay, perfect. And then from there, you grab your ingredients here. Do you actually grab it from here or do you just know what you want? No. Well, this so is actually for take it out. Take so out. a lot of people love our side dishes and all the kimchi. So after a meal, they usually buy this, take their home. Ah, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go into this. And okay. really two concepts in one is what I'm seeing, exactly, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Sally? So the hot pot side is the all you can eat, and we do offer a buffet before COVID. Gotcha. But right now, the customers cannot go up to the buffet physically since due to COVID. So the servers are going to bring all the ingredients from here, whatever the customers picked, and then they'll serve it to you on the table. Oh, I love it. And then we boil basically the seafood, veggies, and meat that they choose in your own pot in a broth, and the customers get their own broth. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Looks so clean. And so fresh. this side is more like a boiling. With yep. your soup. Got the you. other side is like grilling. grilling. So it's totally different. I'm with you. I'm with you here. So okay. before pandemic, we can actually, people who have access to here, they grab themselves, whatever they want, and take to the tables, and they start boiling in their soup. And we have about seven different kind of flavors of uh -huh. soup. They usually choose one of those from there. Do you foresee it going back to the way that it was once regulations are loosened up? Do you of see course. You people, do? Are, people are actually desperate to doing themselves. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> people really want to get back into that. Right. So yeah. This is perfect and set up for that. Okay, so you, you're all set. You yeah. can do dinner parties here. Yeah. I, I can imagine yeah. parties are for big For larger here. parties for the back. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so does this go into the other portion or we go We've through the go front? Yeah. Let's go through the front. Fantastic. Okay. So the Korean barbecue style. Yeah. Let's go to Korean Talk barbecue Talk about style. Korean barbecue for a minute. So have you been to Korean barbecue? I've never eaten here, but okay. I have eaten in similar type similar of places. Type. Great. So Korean barbecue meat is like usually we cooking our own meat on the table yep. yourself. Uh -huh. And it comes with uh, tons of side dishes. So this is our barbecue. The whole restaurant is a barbecue. As you see the, the large hood that exhausts all the you know smokes and things like that. And so people can be uh, can comfortable dining and no smells. And you see the, all those people have a tables with a barbecue grill and sides and everything. So Sally, can you explain to him? Yes. So when you do order our barbecue, we do require two minimum orders to use the grill on the table mm -hmm. or we can um, cook it in the kitchen for you. Makes sense. And once you order the barbecue, we're going to give you about 14 side dishes with a bunch of salads and you're going to see that in your room mm -hmm. soon. And so these rooms, were, yes. I mean, these are set up for the times that we're in right now. I mean, honestly, this is the way that it was before pandemic, and this is the way it is now. But to have private room, private dining, people, we got to love that. Right. This is very spacious and well-appointed. This seems like a fantastic place to just 
whether it's a date or an anniversary or, or any kind of celebration, this is perfectly set up and the hoods are very impressive. So you've right. got, the cooking is fantastic. And you say you order two dishes and you're good to go? Chef yeah, two minimum out. orders yes. of the barbecue. Two minimum yeah. orders of the barbecue. <laughs> All right, let's take a look around at the rest here. So the kitchen in the back, you also have a full service kitchen to where you can have anything cooked for you as well. Right, right? exactly, exactly. Perfect, yes. perfect. And not only we offer barbecue, we do offer like stews and rice dishes. So you don't always have to get the barbecue if you don't want to. And as you can see, Jay's walking through here right now, taking a look, but we're gonna set up in this room here and we've got some friends with us for lunch as well. Is there anything more to see over here or are we going to go join for lunch? Okay, yeah. let's, let's do it. Go let's lunch. go join for lunch. Okay, as we come into lunch right now and these guys are ready to eat and we're ready to go, let's take a seat and sit down and have some good conversation here. So I think everybody's ready to eat at this point in time, right? JW all set to yes. join us? I yes. know when you're in hospitality, your head's always on a swivel <laughs> because you got to make sure everybody's taken care of sit down here okay thank you finally so well, as promised earlier on we told you this is really about community which camera am i on jay the overhead one and as we are in aurora colorado today and at seoul korean barbecue and and uh, hot pot correct um jw this is typical right this yes. is day in and day out this is how you set up your table talk about how this table is set up here yeah, so when yeah. you order the barbecue or any of our dishes here at Seoul Barbecue, it's going to come with um, 12 or 14 side dishes. So this is our fermented cabbage kimchi that Koreans love and anchovies, fermented cucumber, our broccoli with our pepper paste, Ooh, yes, seaweed, fish cakes, eggs and soy sauce, and fermented bok choy. And the salads only come with it when you order the barbecue. Gotcha. Yes. So today here at our table eating with us, we have Chef Marcus and Chef Blake from Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. And if you've watched The Modern Eater for any extended period of time, we have a great partnership and education is really where it's at. And especially right now in the business, we're looking for good help and good help is hard to come by. But when you go through a program like Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start, you get the baseline skills to be able to go into a kitchen and somebody like JW says, well, what do you know? Well, I went through Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start and you go, aha, I know that they have this knowledge base that they can come in and onboarding them into your kitchen is a little less strenuous just because you know that overall knowledge. So Chef Blake and Chef Marcus do a great job at Studio Kitchen Colorado every Monday through Thursday for a free course to you to either knock that rust off or to get going once again in a career if you're changing careers and you want to get into something different. Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. So we have two chefs at the table here with us today Ooh, as well. Yeah. Good to have these guys here with us. And then right around the table, I'd like to start with you, Kevin. Sure. Kevin, introduce yourself and with the Aurora Chamber, right? Yeah, no, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, probably one of the finest Korean restaurants in the state of Colorado, let alone Western United States. <laughs> And so we're just excited, uh, Kevin Hogan with the Aurora Chamber and here with our partner, uh, the Asian Chamber and Fran too. So we're just excited here to support our restaurant and culinary industry. Uh, through COVID, as we all know, it's been such a challenge, but to get people back into the industry, Emily Griffith has just got a great uh, a program to get people into the culinary arts and uh, from back office to front office. And so we're just here to support uh, the culinary aspects of, mm -hmm. of this fine restaurant in the industry. We're gonna talk about restaurants, Aurora, uh, Aurora restaurants, of course. <laughs> and uh, great segue into Fran. Fran, the Asian <laughs> Chamber, please introduce yourself. Well, hello, I'm Fran Campbell and I'm the President and CEO of the Asian Chamber. This is actually my go-to restaurant, JW. <laughs> this is my, our, our family go-to restaurant for birthdays and anniversaries. Oh. We always get the big room Thank here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of our favorites. But um, we've had a long um, partnership with Emily Griffith mm. Technical School uh -huh. uh, for many years. Uh -huh. And we're really happy about that because it's been a partnership that has helped our Asian community as they, you know, if they're new immigrants or refugees, coming into the country and learning a skill so that they can get out there. And now the culinary quick start, I think is really important too. And uh, we've had some, we've had a lot of interest in it. A lot of interest in it, especially now that everybody, like, like you said, is coming out of COVID. 
Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's talk, let's do that. Let's eat first. All right. And yes. um, connect some dots and talk about networking. I think you'll find this quite interesting as we have a conversation of really how high tides raise all ships and how communities mm -hmm. come together to be able to not only support and nurture, but to provide resources and access to folks that may, you know, like what direction do I go and as mm -hmm. we navigate. So let's do that. Let's dive into this food. All right. First of all, how do we approach this? I want to okay. do it correctly. Okay, Is there so any wrong or right way? Okay. So, so we prepared about six meats for you, but right now I'm just going to put our most, most premium beef, the non-marinated. We usually start the non-marinated marinated meats first. Okay. And then we move on to the marination. So I'm just going to coat it with some onions. Dave, you're not going to eat? <laughs> I love it. And just do the play-by-play -play for us on what you're doing here. All right, perfect. That's hot. That's ready to go. It's going to look so good. So what are you cooking now? Oh, that's a, that's a prime rib. And I'll put... Oh, okay. And this is exactly how it comes out for us. Yes, yes exactly how it comes out. And on this side, she's cooking... You're able to eat. The right? kalbi jumalak. <laughs> it's our <laughs> boneless kalbi. And when you order the kalbi jumalak, we marinate it at the spot and we also cut it at the spot. That's the major difference between the kalbi jumalak and the kalbi. Kalbi is going to be, um, be sitting at a marination for about a week mm -hmm. before we could serve it to the customers. Wow. wow. JW, why was it important mm. to do the table side cooking? Because you can uh, choose your own way to cook the meat. Uh -huh. Some people have a rare, or some people have the well done. So that's your choice. So you don't have to deal with the all the only one cook style. So some people just nearly like sear and just eat it right away. Uh -huh. I mean, especially this meat, you don't want to overcook. This is like medium rare, would be perfect taste for this kind of meat. How about, um, so taste, flavor, mm -hmm. right? People right. do that. Experience, I mean, this is quite the experience mm -hmm. that we're going through here, right? right. Um, that's got to be a part of the culture as wow. well that you Great. were born into. Talk about the culture and eating together and really what those types of things signify, if you would. I think all, all, all the countries are the same, but especially Korean, they, you know, they love to gather in with the families. Yeah. You know, and in Korea, it's usually a larger family. So we do have a lot of uh, fermentations, way to cook, uh -huh. and then share, share like a pot together and hot soups and rices. So when we have a together with the family, that's why we traditionally cook some meat in the center and then share with all side dishes and rice soups together. Yeah. That's what our cultures are. Sometimes in the United States, we're just such a fast paced culture that, you know, to stop through a drive through and grab something to eat and eating in the car, it's just so quick and it just goes through the, the process of eating. What time of day generally? Um, More like dinner time. Dinner time? Dinner time, yes. And how long would you reserve for eating? But, but we do about two hours. Two hours? Yes. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> so right now they're ready to eat if you're okay with kind of medium rare. Oh, yeah. It's the best this way. Let's dive in. Yes. Sally, you have some salt? Oh, yes. Let's yes, please. Some. So we have a, a called a mardon salt, like a, a sea salt. So when you dip it in this as sea salt, that tastes the best. That's the best right yeah, there. Yeah, best one. Yeah, guys, jump in if you have questions about what, what you're seeing, what you're about to eat, how you're going to eat it. Mm -hmm. I may find out that after all the years of eating here, I'm eating it wrong. Oh. Because <laughs> so you're going to tell me the right way. And then this is a, like a raw meat. We're just enjoying the flavor, flavor of the meats. But that one is uh, you enjoying the marinations, full flavor with the Korean, like soy sauce, garlic, gingers, and onions, and no, stuff no. like that. Chef Marcus, do you have a microphone? A little. Ah. Grab one for you. Um, I'll set you up for it, Marcus. As, as you're seeing this laid across here, mm. When you see this type of food, where do you, how do you, where do you want to begin with this food? By cooking it as a chef sees it, or where where, where do you go? And here comes Jay. There's a microphone. This is some salt. So, I'm sorry, good. Mm. could you repeat that question? Yeah, I'm just when when you're seeing this and you, and you know you want to approach this food, but as a chef, you want to start assembling things, right? Sure. How are, how are you going to start assembling things for your plate? Um, 
Um, I mean, usually I just start by eating all the, the banchan around the table, and like I'll just make like little. I'll make a uh, like wraps with the uh, with the uh, paste here and the all the meat, but um, yeah, that's generally how I eat this food. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumpling, for by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the modern eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey Four Pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from eight to 12%. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming. Uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey Four Pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pencos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian-style badassery today. the outtake version. <laughs> What's up Denver? I am Chef Natasha Hess and this is Chef Carrie Baird and we are at the Ginger Pig. Check us out gingerpig.com. You can also see us on the moderneater.com. Thanks everybody. It's cornstarch. I know. It's cool. All right, you guys, back to the show in just a second. I'm here in Colorado Springs with Chef Noah Siebenaller, and we're here to tell you about bread and specifically Aspen Baking. Aspen Baking Company has been baking the best bread in Colorado since 1994. Chef, I know you use Aspen Baking Company here. What do you use here? Why do you like it? So um, I use their sourdough, their French Parisian, their burger rolls, marble rye, and slider rolls. Um, I, I was introduced about three and a half years ago, and I haven't found a better bread in Colorado since. So we use it for exclusively for everything. I'm telling you what, you guys, don't take my word for it. Take Chef Noah's. They're making quality product. They don't put in the, 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 the fake colors. They don't put in the chemicals. They don't freeze it. They don't do that stuff. They just bake fresh bread. Aspenbaking.com is where you go to get that bread. And uh, now, back to the show. I'm a huge fan of ferments. Okay, that's the, then you gotta go with this one. <laughs> and then Sally's gonna show actually how we traditional myself. Korean way to <laughs> let us wrap. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, please. I need. Boy, I can see how you just keep it coming. You yeah. know, you sit in here and you start getting into the zone. Exactly. Beverages go. Yeah. What type of beverages do you recommend with meals like this? Uh, this meal, we, we, a lot of people actually enjoy the Korean uh, vodka made out of tapioca and... Uh, rice. rice. Rice too, right? No, no, it's uh, tapioca and uh, potato, sweet potato and balis. Oh. Yeah. This is fantastic. That's it. So we usually offer the Korean vodka and Korean beers. They are enjoying the mix together. That's called the soju bomb. Mm -hmm. People are enjoying that. I'll show you later. Yeah. How you supposed to enjoy? <laughs> and then she's gonna show you how to, uh, like a traditional way to eat the meat. Let's it's Korean it. style. So basically, you just grab one lettuce, and I love our radish wrap. Ooh. So I'm just gonna put one here. I'm a big fan of jalapeno yeah, garlic. Jalapenos, yeah, garlic. Yeah. Some raw garlics and raw jalapenos, adding some flavor, spiciness. And she loves the bean paste. Love it. Oh my and this is how I make it. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> and then she's gonna probably wrap it and dump it into the. That's fantastic. Yes. So sure, don't be shy. No. That's don't be shy. Oh, yeah. am no. I gonna be okay? Yeah. With the <laughs> mic here. <laughs> yeah. And really, just the flavors that you want to combine yourself—they're all in front of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Fantastic. <laughs> 
Those are uh, rice uh, rice paper. Yeah. I'll try a, a piece of lettuce. Yeah, try it, please. Yeah. Oops. Ah. Oh. Rose, can we get some extra chopstick? Oh, thank you. Yeah. So much coming at you. That's Kevin, that's your extra. Oh, thank you. So I'm going to give this yeah. shot. Okay. So you can put your meats, your favor side dish, okay. and a flavor. I'm going to go just like Sally. Just like Sally? Okay. <laughs> Good choice. Fran, you want to try some lettuce? Yeah, okay. Thank you. And then try some rice paper as well. That's very... Uh, Instead of this? Yeah. Instead of that, they'll try this one. Okay. Do you have to call ahead to reserve a room? No, I, would imagine I, mean, no. I mean, if it's a larger party, yeah. it's a safe uh -huh. to call a reservation ahead. But you do but take reservations. Yes, we do take a reservation. Fantastic. Party over six or more, or you can reserve the private room for your family or friends. So, you guys, as business people, and you see other folks in the room that... How do, you, how do you identify what your needs are? How do you go to Kevin and say, you know what, the Aurora Chamber, what kind of resources or help or have an event? How do you guys begin to, to breach those conversations of really being able to work together? What does that look like, you guys? You know, I think it's building a relationship, getting to know each other. Um, so often, you know, there's connections between community, family members, and so we're just here to support, you know, the the well-being, um, not only the local uh, businesses that come here to eat, but our family and our community. This one? Uh, we're blessed in Aurora to have about 165,000 oh, like, uh, okay. people that are uh, a direct uh, uh, like bul uh, connection oh, okay. to foreign countries. Foreign so we, country. we have not only uh, the, a phenomenal relationship with our Korean uh, community, about 25,000 people live in the Aurora area that are from Korea yeah. and their families. Yeah. But we also have a large <laughs> Ethiopian po uh, a population, a very large Hispanic yeah. population. I wear my very, very comfortable pants, Latino too. And, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's Try just it. a, a blending pot. Uh, <laughs> Aurora is probably the most diverse community Try outside of Brooklyn, New York. Interesting. Again, 160 um, anybody? Um, languages even spoken in Aurora Public Schools, 130 languages spoken in Cherry Creek Schools. So we, we just have a, a phenomenal opportunity uh, in a very, very blended community. So um, this is exciting on Havana. Um, um, the, uh, the restaurant here is involved in a new opportunity to create a new Korea town. Mm -hmm. And so we, we just really, uh, from a local aspect, but really from a tourism aspect, as we have one of the largest international airports, hopefully we get our direct flights back into yeah. Seoul to soon Korea. someday. And so it's just really um, about a community working together and, uh, and so many um, community projects that Right. that uh, Mr. Lee yeah. sponsors uh, has just been a wonderful... Give connection. me an example. What are some of those projects? Projects I think he mentioned about the Korean town. Uh -huh. you know, they want to make the Aurora as a large population of the Korea. Yeah. So they're working on the you know, s like six blocks on Havana trying to make a Korean town. So our restaurant is a perfect fit for that, you know, the concepts. Mm -hmm. And then also they're developing you know, some international theme in a nearby airport. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a perfect fit for us too. Yeah. So kind of introducing Korean cultures, food, and you know, everything. That's perfect. And as the Asian Chamber, we talk about some of the things, in, and especially this past year, some, um, some business challenges, right? There are some business challenges out there. I'd like to have that conversation with you. What are some of the things from uh, the perspective of the a Asian Chamber that uh, are some uh, business challenges? Well, when um, I was talking earlier, what, what happened was as soon as, you know, whispers about COVID started in December 2019, was that it? Yeah. As soon as that started, unfortunately, uh, consumers and customers stopped coming to Asian businesses. Um, in, you know, they, they just stopped going to their favorite dim sum or their favorite pho restaurant, stopped going to the markets, the smaller markets like uh, in Southeast or South Denver. Mm -hmm. um, it, it got to the point where in the urban areas, by the time the shutdown happened, a lot of these businesses were already behind 30 to 40 percent in revenue. Uh, their foot traffic had dropped, and it, it, amazingly, I'm sure. Yeah, CJW. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it, it was even worse statewide mm. for Asian businesses. 
Um, and a lot of that had to do with the anti-Asian rhetoric that was going on. Um, it improved for a little bit, but now it's getting worse again as everybody's starting to come out of COVID. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the challenges that the Asian Chamber, you know, we've been trying to help our community, trying to make the right connections for them with the uh, city and uh, nonprofit benefits and relief funds that are available. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So with, with that challenge, what's the messaging that we're working through? How can we put Support out that? Support your small, yeah. small business. I Go agree, back. absolutely. Go back and, you know, definitely JW has some of the best restaurants, but go back to the smaller restaurants as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, the smaller family restaurants where it's mom and dad and a couple of the grandkids that are working there. Go back to them. Or the, the markets, um, the small markets, corner store markets where they may sell the the better kind of soy sauce that you prefer rather than the one at the bigger markets. Mm -hmm. So that's our big message. And um, yeah, we're hoping that things will get better, but realistically, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough for us for a while. Yeah, we talk about the pandemic and mm -hmm. people really just um, reallocating their energies to the path of least resistance, which was staying right. home a lot of times, right, right? Right, right, So now as we're kind of opening back up and loosening regulations, hospitality is one of those things that when you get a guest in, you've got to make sure that you're hospitable, that you're putting out good product, that everybody's on point. What are you doing to ensure that that uh, hospitable, that hospitality sense of really when a, when a guest comes back out to eat, to make sure that they're going to come back time and time again? Or do you just stick to the basics, JW? Well, I think we'll stick to those basics. Yeah. And we're just going to be a, a s not much different as before. But what I see that people are more cautious about uh -huh. you know, how we uh, handle our you know, the, uh, environment. Uh -huh. So we're focusing on, you know, um, of course, sanitation and distance and everything. And still, they are interesting about you know, going out and dining with a group of people. Sure. But I see that some little skeptic about the gathering with other people. So we're trying to be separating as much as we can. Yeah. And then what? But still, they want to is uh, trying to get some best food and best service. Yeah. So we're just going to focus on the basics, and that's what we can do for now. Yeah. Where, how were you impressed growing up in the business? What were some of the fundamentals that you knew? I've got to hold on to these things, and I've got to teach people that work around me in training. Uh, you know, as a chef myself, yeah. as long as I can make a good food and with the quality of the food and with a good price, I think people are going to come back and appreciate our food. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> uh, you, you're up always running around doing hospitality. You're actually eating yeah. a little bit. This is fantastic, <laughs> Sally. You're like the best host in the world. It's yeah. so good. Um, um, is that okay if I put on some please meat? Okay. Talk away. We're just having totally good cool. conversations yeah. here. How about small business in general, Kevin? I mean, what are we looking at? I mean, all the way across the How board in, re in retail. Um, you're the one who's had your your finger on the pulse for many, many years. So trends is something that you study closely. What are you seeing? It's really the support of our small businesses. It's the support of our brick and mortar businesses. Uh, I think we've all gotten used to uh, shopping a little bit online now, having things sent to your home. But um, what's happening in shopping and retail nowadays is if you don't have the restaurant, the entertainment value, you're going to have a shopping center that might fail. And so what we need to do is we need to get out of our homes. We need to eat out at least twice a week minimum. And then we need to support <laughs> our brick and mortar retail businesses that will then support the restaurant industry. It's, it's programs like Emily Griffith that is coming forward to really help out, uh, get people back into the workforce. Um, the culinary arts uh, have suffered with so many closures and yeah. people have left the industry. And so training through Emily Griffith, through a gentleman like this that, that, that can show uh, the culinary arts, the aspects of starting out maybe as a server and becoming a general manager. Mm -hmm. uh, Rose uh, is probably not wanting to be on camera. I'll tease her a little bit. <laughs> she's been in this industry for uh, 16 what, 16 years. years. Yes. Yeah. So you go from maybe that apprenticeship uh, program or an intern and then you become a uh, entrepreneur yeah. like Mr. Lee yeah. and open up uh, 20 some restaurants. So it really starts with a school like Emily Griffith that can bring you into a career path uh, that, uh, that'll be great for you and your family. So well said and as you go along the years, just people that bring you through the business or take the time like uh, Sally and, and, and Mr. Lee 
to where you, you take the extra moment or two to impress somebody on, in their lives and it can change them tremendously. So right now being in the restaurant industry, it's not an easy thing to do. But not only are you looking that right in the face, you're saying, let's grow too, right? Is it just that entrepreneurial, I'm not afraid of anything mentality or, <laughs> I mean, what keeps you driving at this? What keeps you wanting to even grow? I mean, true, it's, I mean, we're, I mean, as an immigrant, you know, in this, I mean, we have a pandemic now, it's yeah. the most typical time in uh -huh. the life, but as an immigrant, I had a more difficult time. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> That's real. That's real. Yes, That's exactly, real. Right? Mm -hmm. So we never give up, you know, that's our mentality. You know, I mean, we have a, people have a difficult time, but you know, who's gonna accomplish, who's gonna go through, yeah. that makes difference. So trying to be successful in business, I think uh, we're just never give, gonna give up. Yeah. We're just gonna continue to day-to-day -day operations every day is, and follow up our rules and our you know, company policies and everything, supporting our local communities and our you know, working families together. Is, that's our mentality and that's our philosophy. What, what's, what are the challenges that you see? And, and I say challenges mm -hmm. just because in everyday business, there's challenges, right? right? I mean, right. that's what you're going to face it. But what are some of the challenges that you see in hospitality in order to get guests back out and want to be dining in, in, in the ways that they've traditionally done before? I mean, right now, the most challenge I've been seeing is uh, labor. Labor. Labor yeah. shortage, it's the most difficult challenges. And then because of this pandemic, everything's rocket up price yes. it's gone up mm -hmm. so much and as a uh, as a retailer a restaurant operator we have to maintain certain price strong yeah. so people are comfortable margin. to coming back yeah. right so we're like losing in margins if we don't increase the price and labor costs gone up even the labor costs gone up we have a hard time to find the laborers yep. and we have a short staff and all the food prices has gone up so we have very thin margins but we try not to increase too much of the price yeah so customers still able to come back and enjoy our you know cultures and food mm -hmm. wow how do you make that money i mean all, all i hear is labor's gone up uh, cost of labor's gone up cost of materials have gone up everything's gone up the margins are still the same right i mean if you're making seven percent revenue off the bottom line you're doing really really good hopefully yeah right huh. so hopefully. if you're down into the threes and fours where where do you try and make up where's the money being made up right now well i think hopefully you know if we sustain this much business hopefully we can grow uh -huh. for the, in the future yeah that's what we're waiting for and hoping for Woo! For See, now. that's where the entrepreneur's brain okay. sally help me finish this up what am i yeah. going to top on oh, this oh that one okay. yeah <laughs> you're I'm like you're you still there greg are you oh my god <laughs> i know all right, that's what I want to get into. Garlic and jalapeno. Thank you. <laughs> hey guys, Alex Armitas over at Sam's Number Three Glendale. You want a Bloody Mary? You want a cheeseburger? You want a breakfast burrito? Greek salad? Bacon gyro meat? Chicken souvlaki? Barbecue ranch salad? We got you covered. Come down and see us. One more time. Try it again. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over here at Sam's Number Three Glendale. Now get your ass to themoderneater.com. Thank you so much. Modern Eater, we love you guys. This is Amber with Northern Colorado Potatoes, reminding everyone that potatoes grown here are truly rooted in love and rooted in a long history of being grown in this area. Early 1900s reports show that this was either the largest or one of the largest potato producing areas in the nation. Other states have had some amazing branding, but don't forget we have all your favorite varieties and more you love to cook and eat, including russet. Support local potatoes, you won't be disappointed. It's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. And you're watching the Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that.
right now. Let me tell you about Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. He's the man with the plan. When it comes to tap installations and tap maintenance, Jeff Rourke is the most trusted man in the business. 20-plus years, family-owned and operated, does great work, and you might be knocking the rust off of your bar or restaurant and getting things tuned back up. He's the guy to call. If you're pouring in efficient beer, Jay, what are you doing? You're pouring your money down the drain. Uh, money. Don't do that. Uh, foam is money. Get a hold of Jeff Rourke, A-plus beverage solutions. Tell him what you need done. He'd be happy to come out and just take a look for you. Here's the phone number to give him a call, 720-272-3809. One more time, 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke and A-plus beverage solutions. Okay. So when you hear, uh, both of you guys jump in, Kevin and Fran, when you hear those and the challenges of hospitality, and we know we need restaurants in order to have a vitalized community and to have vitalized shopping as well, what do you do when you hear those challenges and you know that you have um, resources that may be able to benefit them? What, what are you hearing when you hear those things and how can you dig into your bag of tricks? Yes. <laughs> Don't be sorry at all. Now we're partying. How do you dig into your bag of trips, it, tricks and say, you know, here's some things or some suggestions that I think that we can help out with? It's a big bag of tricks. And I, th I think it's just making the connections between these, the community small businesses and mm -hmm. those bag of tricks. We have a lot of corporate sponsors that are supportive of small businesses. We have a lot of nonprofits that are also trying to put their money... What I really see is that the whole business community is really trying to come together to bring up these small businesses because they know that the small businesses are what is, are what gonna you know they're really the rock of the whole city. That's so true. hold, hold your hold your answer <laughs> because I need to know what we're doing right oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this looks fantastic. Yeah, so this is our Korean vodka. It's called soju. I love soju. And then soju. our Korean beer cast. It's my favorite. And we just mix the two, and it's the best with the Korean barbecue. <laughs> okay. The best. Okay. Oh, we're we'll mixing we'll things. We'll mix it. it. Everybody has to have it. Everyone has to have one. Kevin, all right. right. What, what do you think when you're hearing these? You know, I think the Asian Chamber is a great example. The Aurora Chamber, we practice. We call it the three C's. We're a great champion of business, we're a great convener of people, and we're a catalyst. And so one of the things we try to do is, of course, convene. Um, one of the things that we need help on is with our legislators okay. back in Washington, <laughs> D.C. to help us with our visas. And so we can bring in more workers that can help the industry out. The ski industry is desperate, the restaurant industry. And so we need more help from uh, Congressman uh, Jason Crow back in Washington, D.C. that represents this area to say we need some more um, help with our working visas um, that can help the industry and bring in um, very talented uh, people um, that want to come to the United States and work and support their families and communities. So that's one area. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're a great convener and a great catalyst of things related to the business community. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, I think JW wants to hear from Fran saying, hey, I got this party of 20. <laughs> you want me to send Love over? It. I mean, that's really at the uh -huh. the way things work out is being aware, yes. being astute, knowing uh -huh. who people are. Face to face, and knowing And how to them. connect those dots as well. Yeah. I think the important thing, especially in our Asian community is meeting our businesses face to face. You know, we've been doing a year, year and a half of Zoom. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, now that we're all opening up, we have to go out there and meet them, mm. make the connections face to face. Yeah. Think of how Love. desperate people have been for networking mm -hmm. and being face to face. Yeah, I think we, we, we haven't done that for a year, networking. This is the most networking I've done <laughs> in over a year. <laughs> I can bet you, I'll bet you anything that there's been business deals done in this very room. I'm sure. <laughs> right here. Yep. Because that's what happens. You get down mm -hmm. with some food and cooking and talking and getting to know each other. Drinking. That that's what you're drinking, yeah. right? That those <laughs> are the suggestions is activate these spaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because as you go down this daisy chain of events of how, what in the hell did you just do right there? <laughs> He's mixing it with a spoon. All right. <laughs> and so, oh and wow. does that mean we're partying? Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> do I do that? Now, what, what's a Korean uh, cheer? Gumbe. 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 Okay. I feel like I'm out of hand mine. right now. How did he do that? Mm. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, that's delicious and dangerous. <laughs> so it that's, is. that's like beer and vodka. Is yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that makes it taste better on your meat. That is actually <laughs> really good. <laughs> and make a better deal on business. <laughs> that's <laughs> dangerous, yeah. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms. And I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching the Modern Eater Show. Hey, Zach Ryder here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world. And then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey, Modern Eater fans. I'm Don Trobo with The Annex by Art at Mills. And I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning it into flour. And now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now, back to the show. How many years have you been in this location? You. This location, about we've been in 14 years. 14 years? Yeah. What are some of the uh, just notable things mm, that you've great. seen happen in this business? I'm sure there's been anniversaries, there's been weddings, there's probably been proposals, there's been business deals that have right. happened. What are some of the things that stand out in your mind that really personify the power of being able to come down and eat yeah, your I restaurant? I think most, most uh, the memorable thing was uh, that family came here 14 years ago with a bunch of kids. Uh -huh. But now they grown up. They come with their kids. <laughs> what we seeing that is like, wow, yeah. really. And you go, man, how old am I? Right. You know, I've seen all I forgot about that, but <laughs> that was the most beautiful things we've been seeing. It. Yeah. So like, how long have you been here? About seven, seven, I think seven, seven years. years. Seven years. Yeah. Tell me a story. <laughs> you know, I do want to tell you this, but I don't know if my ex is going to be okay. <laughs> then so, yes, you yeah. must say it. <laughs> so this is a place where Koreans actually come and all the Koreans come and gather here. Okay. So when I actually moved out of state and came back, uh -huh. this is where I ran into my ex-boyfriend. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So is that I was like, a good okay, or I need to work here more <laughs> so I can meet more people. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do you love the business? I do. You I love to, it right? here. Yeah. I love it here. I love coming to work. He's an awesome boss. He's <laughs> an like cool boss. And your everyday type of thing is you're really just circulating the other businesses as well, making sure that True, they can yeah. work together. How can your other businesses work together and just kind of be this symbiotic? Well, basically, you know, what we've been working together a long time with yeah. a long-term relationship with our current uh, current staff. 
So I have a manager working for me like 14 years, 10 years, wow. all the long period. So they are more like entrepreneur as well. Uh -huh. So we have like a partnerships. Okay, you've been working this long, so now you have some ownerships. That's so awesome. they are taking their ownerships and watching their stores. So I don't have to worry too much, and they are more focused on their business. So I just kind of support them. Uh -huh. So and our staff and myself we grow together in this industry. So that's kind of my goal. Wow, what's the dream? Dreams. Uh, so far, I have about uh, 10 restaurants, and um, I wish I can be more like 20 before I retire. 20. So I want another 10 more restaurants. Got another yeah. 10 in you. Yeah. He's opening four more this year. Four this more. year. Yeah. There's opportunity right now too, right? I think this is the best opportunity. I always now. say, with some of the harshest fires that leave behind some of the most devastated land, it also leaves behind some of the most fertile soil. And what we're seeing right now is some opportunity. And again, you see guys like JW is like, I'm in it to keep going. <laughs> keep going. And, yep. and so yeah. it's thin the herd, right? right? It's right. thin the herd a bit. Right. So with the opportunities aplenty right now, do you go in cautious or do you go in with that entrepreneurial mindset of like? Entrepreneur mind. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to make it yeah. no matter what. No matter what, I'm going to go in, I'm going to dive in, I'm going to make it happen, and I'm going to be successful. Tell us a failure that you needed to happen in order to get to where you are. Well, I think laziness, that's going to be a failure. <laughs> and don't be afraid, Thank whatever you're trying to do things. Yeah. And trust your guts. That is the most important thing. If you, don't, if, you, if you don't trust yourself, you don't believe in yourself, uh -huh. I don't think nothing going to happen in your life. That's so true. Um, you guys, th these are the type of inspiring conversations for me anyways, because I'm one of those people that say, if you sit out on an island alone, there's a chance that you're going to stay on that island alone. If you can go out there and network with other people and make yourself not so lonely, then you start to get inspired by other ideas, yeah. other people, those types of things. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things with your local community that you can reach out for and say, you know what, I'm all about networking. I want to network. You have a business, whether it's like you're a small marketing firm or you do social media or you can print this sign for me out front. How important is it for you to do business with your neighbors? Well, first of all, you know, if in, as a chef myself, and I want to really uh, touch base with the Emily Griffins. Yeah. And if anybody has want to learn or have a, a life career experience with a entrepreneur or in a culinary mm -hmm. and or in a hospitality, I can really invite them to show what I do in the day to day operations. And if they want to learn or I can teach them, and then I want to teach, I can able to, I don't speak good English because my education wasn't good enough, but I can, it. you know, teach them what is the mentality gonna be for surviving in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <coughs> just great point. Mm. One of the questions I might have that's sometimes challenging for all businesses is access to capital. And how are you able to leverage and open up <coughs> With, you're a young man when you did right. all that, but uh, maybe an idea for these entrepreneurs out there that are yeah. going through the Emily Griffith School that have that dream, um, was that a challenge and how yeah, might they course. overcome yeah. that? In, 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 the, in the restaurant industry, you know, they have a joke. When you go to bank, restaurant nine out of, nine out of 10 will be fail. Yep. That's what the bank sees. So if it's a beginners, I think uh, first of all, they have to start building the credits very important, keep their, their credit score very nice and strong. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta have a good experience and you have a good business plan to show that you have a passion, so you've been prepared this, the bank will take it. They're yeah. not gonna take a big chunk of the money, but they, they take the risk to have enough money to run the small businesses, yes. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I think really get in at the ground and start learning, right? right? And if you have that, how many people have gone on from working with you like I gotta imagine Sally, she's gonna own a, a string of restaurants at yeah. some point. But you would encourage that, right? Right. Move on, do, do the things yeah. that you would yeah. want to do. How many people have moved on from your um, overseeing or tutelage to be business owners themselves? Well, at the beginning, I start with us um, many people. But right now, the, all the people I work with them, they have uh, their own business already. Mm. Yeah, they open more, many restaurants and different states. So they, you know, I've been trained them, teach them how to supposed to do everything, and even financial, so I teach them. So a lot of about, I'd say about seven, eight people, they go into the out of state, they open their own small business, so they are successful. And whoever staying with me, and as a manager, or like a front house, a back of a houses, they are taking the ownerships, because they're working a long time, mm -hmm. and so we grow together. That's the, I think, our uh, like growing uh, points, be successful together. Yes. When I watch, food and dinner and of course my mindset is just basically on eating and 
what I can get on my plate. <laughs> Your mindset is hospitality and right. how things flow. What are, what are you seeing at this table right now from your perspective uh. and your mindset <laughs> as, a, as a restaurant owner and, and watching your staff uh -huh. serve food? What are the, some of the things, good and bad? Good and bad. Okay, right now I think it's good because everybody happy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. So must be taste good. Here's yeah. the bad. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Here's the happiness. <laughs> I like happiness. Cheers. <laughs> bad things we cannot enjoy this every day. That's the bad things. No, you can't. <laughs> you really can't. <laughs> uh, when I see service row and, and chefs, you, you jump in. Marcus, when you're doing service, it's flow, right? The flow's been perfect here. Today. Yeah, it flows everything. Um, and it really only takes one kind of monkey wrench and all the gears to derail everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, flow and kind of getting along with everybody uh -huh. and being able to work with one another is absolutely critical. Yeah. Flow's Ooh. been great here. See, I couldn't be trusted with these types of things. Uh. I'd get nervous and <laughs> set my sleeve on fire. <laughs> well, Rose, yeah, I'm just she's super, she's still a good server. You yeah. probably she is. and you're a manager she's now, amazing. but uh, yeah, yeah, she's doing great. Thank you. She's the best. You guys know a lot of the folks that work here, don't you? Well, just uh, recognizes you know, but getting to know people uh, uh, at a, a wonderful luncheon like this is really what it's all about. <laughs> Why did you want to change that out? Just because, because you don't want to be burned your meats. And yeah, because it'll too much burn. Burn. Yeah, and it's changing the flavor the and it's actually harmful your body. You don't want to be burned food. So you grill, but you don't want to be burned. Yeah. Right. Inflammation. Yeah, it's in between. So you change that out as well. Yeah. And so constantly, is you, so what, what are the marching orders for these folks? Is like, if there's something empty, pick it up? Yeah, something right? empty, they, they usually pick it up. They ask you want to have more. Then we just generally refill that, the dishes. So you're never going to have empty plate before you, until you leave. Mm -hmm. You have full plates and... How about as far as suggestion goes? If somebody sits down and say, you know what, I, I'm just intimidated. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Help me out with suggestions. Where would you walk customer through? So, Usually ask them. Yeah, so if they are, if they don't want to order the barbecue, they could always order our like really popular dish bibimbap. Uh huh. Yes, so you, it doesn't always have to be this fancy, but we like to be this fancy. Yeah, for sure. So Korean food has a lot of uh, soups. Mm -hmm. and a lot of grill, a lot of stir fries, and a lot of fermentation, mm -hmm. so fresh vegetables. So mainly dish is a uh, deal with all the rices. So we Korean people eat three rice a day. <laughs> Breakfast will be rice, lunch will be rice, dinner will be rice. And with the other things, so a lot of soups, vegetables, salad, Side meat, dishes. fish, so many choices. So we, so far, we're offering like a 10 different kind of soups and 10 different kind of rice dishes and different kind of a stir fry and then grill fish and then meats barbecue and also we're going to show you that uh, uh our specialty of the sushi mm -hmm. sushi is right there and she's going to show that yes oh man just doesn't end so it's that's also a, very that's like a korean very style of the sushis yeah the cuisine is very colorful too oh, oh thank you yeah. and it's a good blend yeah. of like raw stuff and huh? cooked stuff fermented stuff so wow. that's our popular dish she's going to show you that Wow, cool. There we go. That is a raw beef, salad, rice, sushi. Nice. Sweet. Can't say I've ever seen that before. No. I've eaten here many times and I haven't I'm had not, I've not seen that either. So, Sally, can you serve one piece of each? Yeah, of With course. That's, that's, that's tartar. That's it, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Like a UK? Huh? Yeah. UK? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. Good. You're a chef. First. Yeah. Marcus, impressive. Uh, yeah, pine nuts, pears, right? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Tell me that. <laughs> now he speaks Korean. <laughs> <laughs> my, pa my parents lived in Korea when I was oh. a baby. Yeah. Oh, really? That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Have you been to Korea? Yeah, I lived there when I was like very, very small. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, but not back since you're an adult. I've not been back since. Though. I was back about a year and a half ago. I was mentioning to. Uh, to uh, the staff that uh, one of the best trips I've ever had in my life to go back to Seoul and mm -hmm. I had an opportunity, so. Um, yeah, I want to go to uh, Busan. Uh, lobster. Where's the beer and vodka? 
Where's the beer and bobby? <laughs> Sally? Oh my goodness, you are. <laughs> I, are we going to get drunk off. together? You go worse. Goodness. <laughs> We finished together that's at just, the same oh, time. That, yes. just, wow. that just means that I'm having way too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. Communities working together with communities. And Emily Griffith Culinary, quick start. I like to sing the praises all the time, only because I'm very intimate with the, uh, the work that you guys do. Uh, Marcus, if you could take, take a minute and just talk about Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start and the program that you that we see here today. Absolutely. Uh, well, we're like a workforce development program, uh, so it's a very short course. Um, it's a three-week course. Before COVID, we were teaching a four-week co uh, course, Monday through Friday. Um, but our students have the option of learning virtually or in person if they're comfortable with that. Uh, Monday through Thursday, 5:30 to 7:30, and it kind of culminates in a hiring fair for all of our students. So we match employers with the, um, you know, respective employees. And um, they also end the class with a serve safe certificate or essentially a food handler's license. So, um, you know, employers can kind of rest assured that uh, they're not gonna kill anybody first day on the job. Um, <laughs> but it's a great program. We teach everything from basic sauce making. Uh, we like to hammer knife skills. Um, as kind of the foundation for cooking itself, but uh, stock making, soups, very basic butchery, that kind of stuff. So students are better equipped to walk in day one and be able to kind of contribute to a, a team of uh, hospitality professionals. Have you seen an uptick? Uh, one of the other schools unfortunately closed, uh, Johnson & Wales. Yep. So I'm s certain that Emily Griffith has taken over as really one of the lead agencies, uh, leading schools mm -hmm. in the area. Um, Have you seen an uptick? I think definitely an uptick in demand for that kind of education, for sure. Um, and I think if you have seen an enrollment, uh, uh, enrollment has definitely been up. But Excellent. definitely uh, a huge increase in uh, demand for employees around, around the Denver metro area. Yeah. A huge demand. There's and not a better time to get into the business than right now. A lot of the movement that's taken place um, has uh, really left a vulnerable position for a lot of owners and, and management to say, okay, where are we at as an industry and how do we get people back to work um, as quickly as possible? And what we're seeing right now is I think people are looking for the jobs that they want to have, Excellent. Um, which which is an interesting thing. But I would say if you've been looking to get into this business in culinary, uh, give it a shot because Great. there's an opportunity of fun. And I, I would say that what I've noticed in the last couple months, too, is that I think people are starting to offer companies are starting to offer a more livable wage to their employees mm -hmm. just because um, I think it has been so hard to find good help that um, Employers want to keep people as long as possible, but um, I've definitely seen in the last year wages have gone up by a substantial amount. Yeah, and that has to be paid for somewhere. I'm sure, JW, that strikes a chord with you, but these are the realities of what this business looks like. And so as we're watching these margins get smaller and, and needing to have a more livable, livable wage and not be kind of a transient job, mm -hmm. is that it looks like we're starting back to basics with the younger workers mm -hmm. of getting them back into uh, getting them into work and being one of those things to where right now as far as labor goes these were things that we were addressing pre-covid of like how do we bridge the front of the house and the back of the house gap what are we doing with the uh, uh earn the earn tip uh wages right now pooling tips is pretty much the uh, are, are you pooling tips here okay uh, or do you get your tips we we get we own tips you do yeah see i think yeah. That's a really good encouragement yeah, for people to, to come to work. Exactly. Um, Sorry, what was the model? To you get your tips. <laughs> Everybody, yeah. yeah. If you earned your tips, you're getting them for the day. Um, which, which is, uh, uh, again, if you talk to industry people, that's that's something that was very important to be able to do. But in order to compensate the back of the house, how do you bridge that gap right now? Or is there a way to do that? 
Hey, you guys, Jay here with the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a follow on Instagram. And thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater and uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators. You know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the Procard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you can actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120. There's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here at our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. You know everybody, with several million dollars of hard assets here, insurance is very, very important to us. Ewing Levitt covers it all. Machinery, building, workman's comp. Ewing Levitt's got us covered from the floor to the ceiling, from our alley, even to the street. This divider, this press, my cooling conveyor, my oven. Ow, ow! Ewing Levitt covers our counter stacker and our employees too. If you need insurance, take it from Little Rich at Rockalitas. Call Ewing Levitt, they'll get you covered. Hey, this is Keegan from D-Bar in Denver. You guys might find it difficult to stay in touch and stay up to date with the ever-changing culinary scene in Colorado. It's almost impossible. Just tune in to the Modern Eater. These guys have their fingers on the pulse of what's happening in all of the food and beverage in all of Colorado. They're behind us. They understand the idea of shopping local and shopping small. To support them, you support us. Mm, right just, now, just pay the yeah, back of the house more money, I guess. I, yeah, right now I think that's the only solution for now. Woo, yeah. Yeah. Boy, that money has to come from somewhere. Yeah. Are you guys raising menu prices? <laughs> Are you doing a service? We, charge? we, we, well, we don't do any service charges, but we, we just raised a little bit of the, uh, that uh, price you because of the to. margin is so thin. Sure. But you know, that's I think right now we're just looking for that uh, better futures with uh -huh. a better business. I think only only way we can survive with this is we get more business. Yes. Yeah, I think. Uh, I agree. Dealing with the labor costs, you know, of, of front of a house and deck of a house, that is limited. You know, we do as much as we can, but we're looking for more customers coming in, yeah. more repeating customers, more full of full of the houses. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. yeah. Bring, bring them in here. Bring them in. Yep. Um, let's let's jump to the Asian Chamber and Fran. I want to ask you, how can people engage with you guys and say, you know what, I'm a biz. I would like to be a part of this chamber. How can I get a part of it? Jump on board. And what are some of the things that you can offer me as a member? Uh, well, of course, we have the, our corporate level sponsorships. Uh -huh. You know, and, and depending on what level that a member is willing to pay, they get all kinds of benefits. I think though one of the biggest benefits for our corporate businesses and nonprofits is the connection we can make for them with the Asian community. Mm -hmm. Everybody on our board is very connected to the community. Um, a ver it's a divor diverse board representing you know all nationalities and we each have our own, I guess, family within the community that we can make the connections for them. So that is something. We also make the connections for city and state governments um, that members sometimes need, especially in this last year mm -hmm. when they're looking for, you know, the next relief fund or help on PPPs and all of that. And they need to make those connections as well as connections to the uh, financial lenders. You know, which, which lenders are the ones that would speak your language, would understand um, your experience as a, refu a refugee or an immigrant or somebody who's been here for five generations. So I think it's just the connections that we're able to make that are unlike anybody others. 
And it's, it's very similar to the other minority chambers. You know, that's, that's kind of a, a different thing that we have that from the Aurora or even the Colorado or Metro Denver Chamber is that we're, we really do just work with the minority communities. And in this last year, that's, that's what we've been doing, working very hard. How does that process look if I contact you and I say, okay, I'm really interested in being a member. How do you assess me and, and my business and who I am and my needs? Is it just a, a question, a, an ask type of thing? It is, we, we recognize that a lot of times because of the connections that we have in the wide network, the net that we have, that a lot of businesses want to join us just for the opportunity to advertise and to network. It's been hard to network in the last year because everything is, you know, everything is virtual. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had a networking event here um, a year and a half ago, yeah. was it? Yeah. You know, and that's how these small businesses are able to, you know, just network and talk to other businesses. You know, if you're if you are a restaurant and you need a supplier, you know, or if you are um, a construction company that needs some marketing. We can make those connections for you. That's really what a, a, a chamber of commerce does. That's really the basics. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I'm going to pose the same question to you. you know, we, we are a little larger chamber, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we get a little bit more involved maybe in the government affairs aspects, the, the public issues. Uh, one of them, even though we do need a workable uh, wage, um, we really can't have our cities come in and say we're at a $12 an hour minimum wage. We're going to raise it to 24 oh. Um, you know, <coughs> we recognize that, so we do a lot of work at our city councils down at the state capitol um, to make sure that um, the business community is not overlooked and that they, um, sometimes, I might be a little harsh on our politicians, they have not been business owners. They don't know what it is to uh, get capital. They don't know how hard it is to maintain employees, um, but the payroll issue is really a challenge. One of the things that's really erupted that'll affect all small businesses going forward is the unemployment insurance fund. And so we used to be like 0.01%. It's going to go to 13%. Wow. So where we're going for the governor right now is to say, governor, we need you to use the stimulus money mm -hmm. to pay down the <coughs> money that we borrowed from the federal government for our unemployment insurance mm -hmm. fund. If you can imagine going from 0.01% to 13% of your cost of doing business will be payroll insurance. Um, it will put a lot of these restaurants and small businesses under. So yeah. please call Governor Polis and say, <laughs> we'd like you to use some of our stimulus money to pay down the, the de debt we've been bringing in since August. We've already borrowed over a billion dollars from mm -hmm. the federal government for the unemployment insurance trust fund. And most people don't understand that, that that's an insurance that has to be paid back. Mm -hmm. And so can you imagine your costs going up next year 13% just for that one piece of labor cost? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mean to get too elaborate on no, it, but that's what chambers yeah. are yeah. champions for. Uh, yeah. And the Asian Chamber will be down at the Capitol fighting uh, and arm wrestling with the governor too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and truly doing the work that um, not only do we not want to do, but making it possible to be able to bridge those gaps of having that yeah. voice, that yeah. collective voice, is a lot better in numbers than in just one or two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, Correct. explaining to our, I don't mean to be too harsh on our elected officials, but they have not been business owners. And yeah. so very few elected people anymore, even back in Congress and um, or uh, downtown at the General Assembly, they have not owned their own business and don't understand, don't understand. the unbelievable challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they look at, business owners as being just so wealthy, they owe everything, <laughs> but they often are so in debt, um, they just don't understand. Yeah. And that's where you get that aha moment as we sit here in Aurora, yeah. Colorado today at Seoul Korean Barbecue and uh, Hot Pot, right? Correct. And the opportunity to meet with JW and Sally and then to speak with Fran from the Asian Chamber and Kevin from the Aurora Chamber, is this is where it all begins to make sense. This is where it all begins to come together as we mm -hmm. sit here and we have delicious food and beverage uh, at a restaurant in a very communal fashion. And this is where things get figured out. This is where communities come together and this is where we say, here's our efforts. Because when you take light and you concert it into one spot, that's when you have lasers and you can cut mm -hmm. diamond with diamonds. Um, when you're scattered all over the place, 
uh, that's exactly what you're going to see. So if you have any interest in either of these two chambers, uh, please reach out to them directly. How can people get a hold of you, Fran? Um, through our website, acccolorado.org. Very easy. <laughs> okay. And then with you, Kevin? Same thing, uh, www.aurorachamber.org. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and as JW said, here's how you can help out. Get your butt in the seat. Yep. <laughs> Come on yeah. in here. Yep. Yeah. Enjoy some food. And, and you know you need to eat and you love right. to drink as well. And you want a place to be able to do that. But that's where sitting down in a locally owned business with folks that put their heart and their soul and passion into what they do, this creation. And this is where it all comes together for that moment that you yeah. go, you know what? This is why we're doing this. This right. is why it all makes sense. Right. And for you guys to be able to provide this type of experience mm -hmm. for us, it's invaluable. Mm -hmm. And I thank, thank you so much for doing yeah. that. Hey. I uh, cannot I cannot give you break? vaccines, but I can <laughs> make your tummy <laughs> happy. Good food. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> provide good food. I love it. Emily Griffith <laughs> Culinary Quick Start, you guys are doing such wonderful work. And for our community to educate these folks that want to get into the business or just getting going again. It's Absolutely. good work that you guys are doing. Oh, thank you very much. It's our pleasure. Um, I, I think I can speak for uh, Blake and I that we love just teaching people how to cook, and I think it's just such a huge benefit for uh, you know our community at large if people can feed themselves and then feed others around them. What are we getting into now, guys? I got to get back to the food. Okay. Get back to it. Yeah. <laughs> So this is our spicy pork, uh -huh. and then I really actually wanted to say where, oh gosh, is it all gone? All gone. Oh, yeah. it's still here. So the one on your yeah. plate is the thick sliced pork belly. It's really, really popular, but we do offer the thin sliced pork belly as well. You do? It's really, really popular. Okay, it's <laughs> good. It's so good. Delicious. It's really good with our drinks, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything has been delicious. Um, and again, this is the experience that you'll have. I'd say um, call ahead um, just to make sure that there's room for you. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of room here, but everybody's treated the same. Um, this is a fantastic place could, to be. What's the address board? again? 2080 South Havana Street. <laughs> Come on in. Basically, I live in Havana. Right? Mm -hmm. it, basically, I live in Havana? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I live yeah. in Havana. I live okay. in Havana. A little north. Havana. Thank you, guys. Thank Chefs, you. thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Thank I want to see some of the other restaurants that you have. Please. Um, just I want to show to Korean fried chicken Korean next time. How, how would you describe it? It is. It is. How Where would you describe it? the Korean fried chicken? Is it going to be hot? It's, it has a hot and a uh, soy garlic flavor as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have some choices, but it's going to be nice, crispy outside. Ooh. I love that. With the Korean flavors. That's on Blake Street? Blake Street. Brand new? Yeah. Brand That's new. Blake Street. 16th Street? 16th and Blake. <laughs> and Blake? Yes, That's sir. That's fantastic. Okay. We'll go yes, check sir. that out. Um, you're all, all over town. You're in Lakewood. You're in Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Aurora. Aurora. Aurora downtown. And, and downtown. Ojai. Keep an eye out for these guys. They do a great yeah. job. Again, these are the chambers you want to be a part of, the Asian Chamber. So good to have met, met you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I really this appreciate is really a treat. your time today. It's really Thanks a treat. Thanks again. And I, Kevin, I didn't know what to expect, but this thanks. is this is fantastic. Anytime there's food involved, well, just, just that's right. yeah, call the phone and I'll be right there with you. <laughs> well, Kevin, thanks to Emily Griffith for putting us all together. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Thanks to the Korean barbecue. Uh, this is just a fabulous uh, opportunity, and thank you for the food. I was starved, and I thought, <laughs> am I going to get lucky and eat? And I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to finish eating, and I think yep. that that's most appropriate. Again, how do we cheers? Gumbay. 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 All right. Thank you. Come Thank out. you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Come sami da. Come sami da. We'll see you down the road. Thanks, Jay Parker. Did such a great job. Okay. And Dave Box, thank you as well. We're going to sign off for now. We'll see you down the road as the Modern Eater Show will continue. <laughs>